you can expect at least one mark question in IES and PSU exams. Maybe not in GATE directly, but you are expected to know these properties. We will also use these properties in the later parts of the communication theory. And how do you represent the convolution of discrete signals? I would like to mention the convolution of discrete signals. If you have two discrete signals as x1 of n and x2 of n, so the convolution of these two signals is y of n equal to x1 of n convolved with x2 of n. You don't have integration here. So instead of integration, you use sigma. Sigma j is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of j, it is an independent variable, into x of n minus j. Because this has to be a function of n. So you have to integrate over minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. We will take examples later. I want you to know how to find the convolution of both continuous time and discrete time signals. Okay, now like we saw x of t getting convolved with delta of t. Now what happens if x of n is convolved with delta of n? Let's see that. What happens if x of n is convolved with delta of n? Because delta of n is the impulse function impulse function for discrete domain discrete domain so delta of n is 1 is equal to 1 for n equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 otherwise Okay, now the first property of impulse convolution, x of n convolved with delta of n. I am not going to prove it again. So what will happen if you take the convolution of x of n with delta of n? This will result in x of n again. Number two, what happens if you take the convolution of the impulse functions itself? delta of n convolved with delta of n. This will result in again delta of n. So there is no meaning in taking the convolution of the two impulse functions. It will again result in the same function. Number three, x of n convolved with the delayed impulse function delta of n minus k. This will result in the delayed input signal x of n minus k. So if you want to delay input signal, one way of delaying it is by convolving this x of n with delta of n minus k. And then you have x of n minus l convolved with delta of n minus k. So the delayed input signal convolved with the delayed impulse impulse function that will result in x of n minus l minus k. So the delayed input signal by l plus k units. So these properties are similar to the properties that we have seen for continuous time domain. And impulse response is of interest to us now because we have already understood what is delta of n that is the impulse function. Now let's try to understand what is the impulse response for say discrete system. Impulse response of discrete system of a discrete system. So the name itself says impulse response. So there is a system and we say it is a discrete system, right? So this is a discrete time system. So if the input to this discrete time system is delta of n, 
then the output of it is h of n. We represent we use a notation called h of n. So strictly speaking, this h of n is the response of the discrete system whose input is an impulse. It is why it is called impulse response. So the, if you give the input as an impulse, the output is the impulse response of the system. So this is actually equal to I can say if, if I use a notation called for example capital H if I denote this system with H then I could say that is H of n which is capital H of the impulse resp impulse uh, impulse function delta of delta of n so the impulse response is defined as a linear discrete time operation involving impulse sequence so this is a linear discrete time operation okay that will that will involve the impulse sequence so when, when impulse is given as an input to the system the output is referred to as the impulse response of the system like some of the properties of impulse response which you must be aware of that is the linearity property the linearity property so which means if if you know that the impulse response of delta of n say is h of n then if you scale it by say some constant c so the impulse response of c into delta of n will be equal to c h of n an impulse response satisfies this linearity property it also satisfies the time invariance property the time invariance property which is if you know that the impulse response that is h of delta of n is equal to h of n then then the impulse response of what will be the impulse response of delta of n plus r minus k that will be h of n plus r minus k so here k refers to the shift time shift okay and you know that if the input is delayed or advanced by k units and if that results in the output signal which is either delayed or advanced then it is said to be a time invariant system so impulse response of system again means that you know this impulse response is a time in it satisfies the time invariance property obviously it satisfies the superposition property superposition property what does superposition property say if the impulse response that is h of delta of n if it is equal to h of n then then it is similar to saying that you know the impulse response of c of delta of n plus r minus k is equal to c of h of n plus r minus k so a system that satisfies the above three properties linearity time in time invariance and superposition then this system is said to be a linear time invariant system so now we have defined what is a linear time invariant system the topic name says linear time invariant system but now we have come to a understanding that a system which will satisfy these three properties the linearity property time invariance property and superposition in fact this linearity and superposition sometimes you know these two are merged together the properties are merged together so it's superposition linearity should be like scaling this you can also just refer it as scaling instead of calling it as linearity so scaling plus superposition if both these conditions satisfied then we say it is linear property and if this condition is satisfied then it is said to be time invariance property so a system is now can is, can now be referred to as a linear time invariant system 
So in the exam, if he gives a system and if he asks to find out whether it is a linear time invariant system or not, then first check for the linearity property. That is, it should satisfy both scaling and superposition principle. If that's the case, then you check whether it is a time invariant. So check for the time invariance property. If that, if both these conditions are satisfied, then you can call it as a linear time invariant system. Okay. Now let us understand the output response of the discrete system. Output response. How to calculate or how to mathematically understand the output response of system. Say you have again a discrete time system. A discrete time system whose input is x of n and let me write it as a discrete system here. A discrete system and the output is y of m. And we can relate the input to the output as you know if you denote it as capital H then y of n is nothing but h applied on to the sequence of x of n x of n and we can also denote we can also represent this system mathematically by h of n which is nothing but the impulse response of the system so if you know the impulse response of a discrete system as h of n and you know the input as x of n and the output as y of n then what is the relation between y of n x of n and h of n y of n will be equal to x of n